Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Behind me, I got a 2017 Porsche Macan S. This thing has around 25,000 miles on it and we are going to be replacing the front pads and rotors. Now, before we go ahead and begin guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below because it definitely helps the channel grow. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on the repair. Now, before we begin this repair guys, I do wanna mention, you don't wanna attempt this job if you don't have all of the tools needed in order to do it. These can be a little bit tricky because it's actually a uh, triple piston design on each side. Uh, so to compress the front brakes, you're gonna need a specialty tool. And even to remove the caliper, uh, you're going to need a specialty socket, a triple square. So make sure you got all the proper tools before you go ahead and begin on something like this. And I will be uh, showing you guys what those tools are as we're going along in this video. I just wanted to throw this out there uh, before the video starts. So we went ahead and we got our wheel off and we are looking at the caliper. Now you'll notice that this Porsche has a pretty unique caliper. It's not like all of the other styles out there. Uh, it's kind of similar to what I refer to as a Burmbo style, but those have an opening up here where you can remove the pads uh, without having to remove the actual caliper itself. Um, I don't know what they call these, but it's kind of like that one, just a little bit uh, more intensive. So. The way that this is held up on here, it's going to be retained by this bolt down here and this bolt up here. These bolts, as you guys will see, they're uh, not the usual type of bolts. They're actually a triple square. Uh, Porsche, Audi, Volkswagen, they're very intense when it comes to these. This is the style they use. Uh, you're going to need a specialty tool. This is what it looks like, if you guys can see. It's basically a multi-point inverted tool. And uh, I have this paired up with a really long ratchet. And what I'm going to do, and sometimes these can be a stinker, guys. They don't like to come off that easy. So it's always good to make sure you're fully seated in there before you go ahead and do anything with it. So I'm gonna grab my little hammer here from my bench. And what I like to do is tap it and make sure you're in all the way. Cause if you're not, you can easily strip them out and that's definitely gonna ruin your day. So now that I have that on there, we're gonna just go ahead and break it loose. And depending on who worked on the last guys, these will uh, have a little bit of force on them. So be very mindful of that. We're going to go ahead and take this off and we're going to do the same thing for up top. Um, I always make sure I line it up and then just tap it in. You will see that the thread starts, you know, going all the way inward. And then what we're going to do is grab it and just break it free. And just like that. Now that we've, uh, broken it free what I'm gonna do is try to take off our tool and I just like switching it to a actual drill because these can be pretty long they can be uh, kind of annoying just to sit there and get them off with a hand ratchet so let me grab my Milwaukee 3 8 ratchet here and we're gonna be using this to take them off and you guys will see they are very long bolts you want to Make sure you have something to zip them off with or do them manually, whatever you prefer. I just find it's easier using an impact. Now that you have both of your retaining bolts removed, you'll notice that this can still be in here kind of stiffly. Uh, what I like to do, and I'm replacing my rotors guys, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to gently come in here and just compress it a little bit just to give myself a little bit of working room. And what I'm also going to do is try to compress it back towards the other way here. Um, this thing is not grabbing, so it's actually pretty loose, so I should be good right there. So now that we have it loose, you're going to want to take your hook, whatever you're using to support the caliper. Um, you don't want to leave these hanging because uh, the only thing that's really going to hold this thing up right now is the brake line. But we're going to go ahead and slide it up and connect our hook to it. And what we're going to want to do here is uh, safely tuck it back on our uh, spring there to hold it up. This is just so the weight of it is not put on the actual line and stresses it out. Now you will notice here is the brake line for it and we also have this other wire attached to it. This other wire is going to be our brake pad wear sensor. Uh, that'll be the next thing that we're going to be tackling on here. Uh, let me set up the camera. I'll show you guys how we remove that. With the caliper hung out of our way, guys, you will see here, if you kind of follow this wire, you'll see it's uh, 
the one here you can see the red uh, wires going inside of this black protector that's going to be your brake pad wear sensor um, it's very difficult to see because of the location of it I'm gonna try to zoom you guys in uh, you'll see there's like a little ear tab there the way that locks into place is you have to basically spin it off one way or another uh, and that's how you're able to get it off now I'm not gonna be able to show you guys the best uh, clear sh way here but what I like to do is take some pliers and this is on the side of the harness that we're going to be replacing and what I like to do and this can prove to be a little bit difficult guys is you're just going to want to spin it off um, just like this you can see I kind of worked it off with my wrench and then what we're going to do is get it all the way spun off make sure it's not clipped into place by anything and what you should be able to do is go ahead and lower it down at this point now sometimes it'll want to fight you it just really depends on how it's put in here now this one is fighting me more than usual this should have come off let me see I got my tab worked all the way down it should just slide right off the bracket here uh, nothing ever ever goes as easy as planned guys but there you go you just kind of got to manipulate it around um, the way it works is on this little grooved edge here there's a certain point where it just slips past it's kind of like an elongated oval with a cutout and that'll release it now you will notice that you have the car harness hooked up to it uh, what you're going to want to do is press on the tab which is up here uh, i'm going to try to do this without blocking the camera as much you push on the tab and go ahead and disconnect it now you will need this car side later because you will be uh, reconnecting the new one on there or this one if you're planning on reusing it. However, we got a new one. I would always recommend replacing these when you get your brake pads because if you don't, you will have issues and you don't want to have to redo everything. All right, guys, so the next step in this that I like to do is go ahead and remove our rotor. Now, the rotor has a retaining screw. If you pay attention, you got your actual holes for your wheel. And right here, you will notice, and I'm going to try to zoom you guys in, uh, you see you have this torque screw right there. What that is is a holder for the rotor. You're going to have to remove that. Now, sometimes these come off easy. Sometimes they fight you. I'm going to go ahead and just attempt this here, see if it comes off. And it did, luckily. Um, so that's always a major good plus that we went ahead and got that off. Sometimes these do fight you. Uh, they are small. And these particularly, because they are Torx, uh, they typically don't like to come off. Um, especially here in the rust belt, you'll usually be fighting them or you wind up just taking the head off of them and removing them that way. Um, so once you have that removed, now you're going to have more clear uh, access to your rotor and be able to have it come off. You will need a hammer at this stage, you guys, because we will have to tap on the rotor right now. I'm going to see if this thing's going to be easy and just maybe come off, and, you know, it's not. Sometimes they fall right off. Sometimes you got to fight them. But either way, what I like to do is I put one of my lug nuts on here just to kind of help keep it from falling on my feet, and I'm going to take my hammer, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit on it. Now, if you're planning on reusing the rotor, you really shouldn't have to remove it. But if let's just say you don't want to scar up the surface, go ahead and hit the rotor on the inner side. Since we do have replacements for this, it doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and hit the bigger end here. And just like that, you see the rotor is basically coming off. It's loose. It's a good thing that we have our stud here. That's why I put that in place because if you don't have that there, guys, you will be dropping it on the floor or on your foot or on your head. You know, it just really depends on... Uh, how the car is being held up here now since we're on a lift when this falls it would fall pretty much directly onto my foot even though i have steel toes uh, that would not make for a great day so always be mindful of that now that we have our rotor off what we're going to be doing is cleaning up this flange area this one's not bad it's actually pretty flat but i always like cleaning up any rust and the way we do that is we use our die grinder uh, we're going to come in here and we're basically just going to clean off the surface In the last clip you saw me grinding it off, I just kind of did a fast frame of it. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and clean it off with some brake cleaner. Just get off any uh, remaining contaminants or dirt debris that may be on there. Now a lot of you, if you are very astute, you'll notice be like, Hey Mike, this is shiny and then it's dark and it looks like you didn't clean it very well. Well, this is made out of steel guys. Uh, steel has a tendency to stain. 
Uh, this is a nice clean level surface now. There's no ridges or anything on there. But after a while, uh, it just has a tendency to stain up like this. And it's not really in a specific way or pattern. They just tend to, you know, stain however they want to. Uh, whatever uh, position it lays in the best, I guess you could say. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, do know that that is nice and clean. And there's no way you can really get that off without milling it and I don't even know if you mill it if you could get it off but either way uh, that's getting way out of point and getting way too carried away um, now one thing to notice on these cars guys and you will notice you have on the inner side these cutouts uh, kind of like vents those go on a specific way so if you do wind up buying a pair of rotors for these cars make sure that you don't put the passenger side on the driver's side and vice versa I actually matched mine up uh, with the old one just to make sure that I'm putting it on the correct way. And the thing is, I don't get a lot of Porsches in here every day. So I don't know these cars like the back of my hand like I would any other car. So I usually reference the old parts just to make sure I'm not doing anything incorrect. Uh, so, you know, just give you guys a little tidbit of info on that. Now what we're gonna do is take our rotor and go ahead and put it into place. Now be careful, because as you guys just saw, that thing almost released and fell. And to be honest with you, I was not ready for it. Uh, I thought it was on there pretty firmly. So I'm going to keep my hand on it here. And what I'm going to do is take our holding screw and I'm going to get it in here a couple threads. Um, sometimes it's hard lining these up simply because when you're putting it on and the camera's in the way, like in my situation, uh, you're not going to be able to see very well. So I just got a couple threads on it right there. That should hold. Let me get my gun here, and what we're going to do is go ahead and place that back on there. And we have our rotor on. Now we're going to go ahead and do some uh, brake pad swapping and cleaning up on the caliper. Alright guys, so we are looking at our caliper here right now. I got some extra lights here to hopefully uh, we can all see this pretty good. And I uh, just want to give you guys a heads up. I'm going to do my best not to block the camera, but it's such a tight, confined area here. And this caliper doesn't move in and out that easily so it's hard for me to you know work around this but i'm gonna try to do my best for you guys now this is where we need a special tool guys we need to compress the pistons all the way before we go ahead and remove our brake pads and what we're going to be using is this tool here it's a lyle tool uh, this is called a twin pad separator the way it works is you put this in the middle and you go ahead and pump it up and it should basically give us the room that we need um, just put it in the center there and what we do is just pull on this and this should compress the pistons uh, quite easily now my tool is kind of broken here uh, last time I used it it did kind of uh, break apart on me uh, so I don't know how well this is gonna work I may have to go to plan B uh, which looks like I'm going to have to now I've been wanting to get this tool replaced guys but I just haven't had the time uh, my vendor hasn't been uh, coming by lately. I don't know what's going on with them. Uh, but it kind of sucks when the right tool for the job isn't working. So I'm going to switch to this tool. Um, it's a Ling brake tool compressor. Let me see if I can uh, retract this to fit in there because it looks like it's not going to fit with the brake pads on there. And yep, I would be correct. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick the way I do it when I have to use this tool on this. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove one of the brake pads. Uh, these just slide out. You'll notice you have these tangs that line up on here, on the uh, brake pad here. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and take one of your brake pads off and just, you know, put that to the side. Leave one on, and the way you're going to want to position this right now is uh, kind of halfway to here where you can reach all of them. And this is the part that uh, it's going to suck because you got to get this perfectly in there. Let me see if I'm doing this any justice. Um, there we go. So the way I have it set up is the tool is barely touching here on the outer pistons, but it's fully inside the center ones. And I got the brake pad on the other side applying the equal pressure. And we're just going to go ahead and ratchet this to uh, push all of our pistons inward here. Uh, I used the same method on the other side. I just wanted to show you guys that tool that uh, if it was working would make our life a lot easier but you know this works the same way too uh, it's just that it's a little bit more challenging because the actual part of this tool here is not long enough to be able to fit in there this is made for a standard uh, brake tool so 
setup so I mean for this type of setup so now that we went ahead and we put all of our pistons in what we're gonna do is go ahead and take our brake pad off with the shim and these brake pads slide off fairly easy guys um, this inboard pad will fight you because you'll typically have the wire that it's going to be held up right here let me see if i can zoom you guys up you'll see that this wire is held in right here on the bleeder screw typically uh they kind of feed it through just to hold the wire for the brake pad wear sensor i just take my knife and i pop off this little dust cap because sometimes these can be pretty difficult to take off and what you're going to want to do here is just pull up on your wire move it out of your way and then we are going to unhook it from the portion of the caliper where it sits in and you can see the pad practically wanted to fall off on this one and we're going to pull everything off here as an assembly now a lot of you may be wondering mike how does the car know when you need brakes well if you look at this brake pad wear sensor guys you can see it got chewed up when that gets basically grounded out, uh, what happens is it'll trigger the computer, letting you know that you need to replace your brake pads. And you can still see there's some pad life left on this. So it's set to pop up at a certain point, roughly when you're around 30% or 25%. So that way, you know, you're not grinding metal to metal. So you do have a little bit of time as soon as the light comes on. It's not like an immediate thing where you have to go right away but also you know you're on borrow time as well because depending on the situation of the brakes you could have more or less time it all really depends on what exactly caused the inner pad to wear out because typically you only find this sensor on the inboard pad if the outboard pad is thinner it will grind so just give you guys a heads up now that the brake pads are out of there guys we're going to have to remove our holding springs um, let me get a little bit of better lighting in there so you guys can see but you'll notice that we have a spring here and a spring there. They kind of look like crosses in a way. Uh, let me see if I can get my light set up here perfectly so you guys can see. Uh, these are quite easy to get to. What you're going to want to do is basically push them from the outside in. And hopefully uh, this is going to be a good example right here. But what I do is just bop them off like that. Now I do apologize. I just hit you guys. Uh, that one went straight for the camera. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys saw what I did there but if not I'll just illustrate on the top one too we're gonna go ahead and just tap it inward and that basically releases it now that we have our caliper bare guys I'm gonna kind of adjust you guys here a little bit so I can get in here as well uh, what I'd like to do is take a wire brush and I'm just gonna clean off you know around the areas here now unfortunately guys i don't have a, a way to super clean these and get these nice and spiffy um, i just basically work off all of uh, the dirt and dust and contamination off of these using this brush now what i'm going to do is go around to the whole thing i'm going to try to just get the dust off the sides like really up here realistically let me grab my little pocket screwdriver um, these areas it's nice to clean them up but it's not going to make a big difference you mainly want to clean where the piston is and these little uh, fingers that stick out that hold up uh, the brake pads now you don't want to take any sort of grinding device to these guys something like a wire brush just to basically get the dust and dirt off of them you are not looking to grind anything off either of these ones right here these four little pins or of these pistons so be very gentle when you're cleaning it up now this usually takes me about 10 15 minutes or so to get most of the stuff off of here so i'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera just because of the way the spacing is uh, but i'm just gonna be using my wire brush to take off as much of this uh, brake dust as i can and then what i'm gonna do is go ahead and rinse it off with some brake cleaner so I've gone ahead and I brushed off as much as I could from the areas that I needed to guys. Now I'm just going to take my brake cleaner and just thoroughly clean everything off here. Um, what I also like to do after I do this is also grab a rag and just wipe off any remaining areas. You'll see it's not really the cleanest because you have some dark areas here and there. But like I said, those areas don't really count as much, but you know, clean your best as you can. All right guys. So after we cleaned our calipers and we blew some air on them i thought i hit the record button uh, but i unfortunately didn't uh, but what you're going to want to do after you dry them off is take 
your lube, whatever you're using, and go ahead and lube them up. Um, you want to put lube on the faces of the pistons. There are six of them. And you also want to lube up these pins right here. You're not going to go for crazy amounts of lube, guys. Just some general, you know, a little bit. Just to keep things uh, from, you know, making noise uh, when it's metal to metal contact. Uh, you don't want to douse these things with a whole bunch of grease. Uh, minimal at best. Uh, just to have some cushion room in between the metal surfaces, nothing enough to where it'll get on the pads and create a brake issue. Um, now that we have that done, and you guys clearly saw that I did them already, I just wanted to mention it uh, because the camera wasn't recording. Uh, what we're going to do next is take our clips that go inside of our caliper, and we are going to install them. Now these are actually pretty easy, guys. Hopefully you guys will see here. What you're going to want to do is just take them and push them in just like that. Um, they take literally a second to put in. I just line them up here and then I just push them in. Now ideally you may wanna put these in before you go ahead and loop up your caliper like I did. Um, I just had a customer that came in so I kinda got thrown off because I have to attempt to that thing. Uh, and then, you know, I came back right now to the video. Uh, but basically, you want to put those in before you lube it because what I like to do is also put a little bit of lube on the top face of the springs here. Uh, this is where the spring holds onto the brake pad. You just want to have a little bit of lube just to help uh, keep any noise down, have a little bit of a cushion on there. Um, so once you have everything prepped up like this you're ready for brake pads now let me go ahead and get those and i'll show you guys how i do those install all right now that we have everything greased up guys what we're going to want to do is grab our brake pads now these are kind of unique let me kind of pull you guys back here and show you the way that these are going to go in you notice you have those top springs you're going to have to kind of push it in at an angle to get it passed on those top cross springs or whatever these are called and then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and push it in and line up these cutouts with the pins. Um, I'm going to zoom you guys in. That's probably like the easiest explanation I could give you. Um, otherwise, I'll have to show you um, kind of like what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to put them in, make sure the top goes in. And there's going to be a little bit of spring pressure. And you just kind of push them in just like that. Be very mindful because we do have grease on this opposing side, guys. Make sure you have a rag on you. And I always just clean up my hands just to make sure there's no grease. Even though I'm wearing gloves and they're dirty, you can see they're really dry. Uh, the reason being is you don't want to get grease on your friction material. It can lead to noises, inadequate braking performance, and things of that nature. Uh, so you want to be very careful. If you do somehow wind up getting any grease on your friction material, you'll want to just wipe it off really quick and maybe use some brake cleaner and clean it off. And hopefully, uh, you know, that'll be good enough. Uh, what I find is the longer you leave grease on a brake pad, uh, the more it absorbs in there. So you want to be very careful not let it do that. Now, just to illustrate, what I'm going to do is also do this side on camera. And unfortunately, I can't see very well because I am kind of uh, blocked in here uh, because the camera's in the way. Let me see if I can attempt to do these. And unfortunately, I can't, not from that angle. Let me see if I can move you guys a little bit here out of the way. Let's see if it's possible. Um, it's just like a little spring effect that you got to overcome. Um, and then you can basically put them in. Uh, you'll notice that I'm kind of pushing inward as I'm pushing back. Because that little tab on that cross is pushing out. You want to push it upward. Um, otherwise, uh, you're not going to be able to get them on. Once you have them on, just how we have them right here, um, what I'm going to do just in case is wipe my hands up again, guys, and I'm going to grab them and make sure they're firmly seated, which they are. Uh, now we're ready for the next step, which is going to be to go ahead and install our caliper back into our knuckle and onto our rotor. Now that our pads are installed and everything is ready to go, we're going to take our caliper uh, unhook it from our holding hook here and we're just going to set that to the side and we're going to take our caliper and we are going to be basically placing it let me see if the camera will catch this uh, onto our new rotor um, once you place it on there just like that what you're going to want to do and i'll get you guys zoomed in here again let me see if i can find the proper zoom 
Um, and this is the part where you gotta bolt it up. Um, these are easy in the retrospect of bolting them up. What I always have to do is kind of come in here and uh, look at them. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to block the camera here for a second, guys, just so I can get them lined up. But we wanna be right here. And I can't stress this enough, guys, hand tight. You do not want to cross thread these. Um, don't get really ballsy or really, you know, macho on these and take your impact gun and try to impact them. They are aluminum. Um, they will break fairly easy, or at least I believe these are aluminum. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you. Let me see, I got my magnet here. Yeah, these are uh, not aluminum. These are actually steel bolts. Um, but they do, I believe, go into aluminum, so you can easily uh, basically strip out threads. Be very careful. I'm gonna go ahead and get these threaded on here. Sometimes it takes a little bit where you gotta play with it and the camera's in the way, so I'm gonna move you guys out of the way and make sure my threads are seated correctly, and I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to tighten them up. All right, I went ahead and I got my bolts threaded in there, and a good way to check to make sure your bolts are threaded in, guys, is uh, just pull on them and see, make sure they don't come off. Like in this scenario, you can see they're very firmly in there. Um, what I like to do next, and you know, I'm gonna do this very gently, I'm gonna take my impact ratchet here and just slowly work them on. I'm not gonna tighten them up all the way because these do have a specific torque they gotta be at, but I'm just gonna snug them up. As you guys can see here, I'm being very gentle and very easy with them. Uh, just to get them snugged up Now like I always do on my channel guys I do torque a lot of things But I don't like showing it on camera because not everyone's gonna torque everything some people are the good and tight type of people Which I'm not gonna lie. I do every now and then in this scenario I am actually gonna be torquing these on here properly However, I don't like sharing torque specs or showing it on camera just because some people don't do it Some people do and depending on where you're getting your torque references from you know, you might say, hey, Mike, that's the incorrect torque or this or that. I use Mitchell for all, for all of my torquing requirements and all of my information, guys. So if you're using some other system out there, it may be different. However, I just go with industry standard. And like I said, I use Mitchell for all my torque specs and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and get those torqued on there. And I'll be right back with you guys. Now that I've gone ahead and I torqued everything on there, guys, um, since these are painted calipers, what I like to do is just wipe them off. Uh, I'm not gonna actually spray any brake cleaner or anything on them, uh, but what I like to do is at least get off a majority of the dust and grease that'll be on here. Uh, the reason why I won't spray them down with brake cleaner at this point, because there could be oils and stuff on this actual caliper, and you could be injecting them inside of your brake pad if you spray them. They might go inward and hurt your new pads and your new rotor. Uh, so what I do is I just wipe them up and you know give it a little bit of a cleaner appearance however i'm not going to go crazy and polish these out like i mentioned earlier uh, i at least want to clean them up make it a little bit nicer looking you know not leave them super dirty or anything like that i at least want to clean off where i touched and what i touched because realistically they did come in dirty this car was uh, an active car and it is driving out there and it is currently uh, cold and snowing in chicago so you know everything's wet out there so uh, either way just clean up as much as you can and uh, if you uh, wanted to clean this up or paint it or do anything, you want to do it before you install any rotors or anything, guys, just to kind of give you guys a heads up on this. Um, and if you want to clean the outside, you want to clean it before as well. You don't want to just inject or contaminate any of your new parts, whether it being the brake pads or the rotor. All right, guys, so now that you have everything bolted up, what we're going to do is go ahead and take our brake pad wear sensor. You notice the side that has the copper ring on there, you see it's kind of shiny. That's actually going to be facing inward towards the piston of the caliper. And uh, it's quite easy. Um, you just go ahead and put it on the little tang that is on the brake pad and it snaps into place. Then what you're going to want to do is loop it into this little cutout that you have here. And these typically will run up to where your brake bleeder is and uh, the way that they install on that let me kind of zoom you guys in here is that they'll basically go in there and you just put the cap over it and that'll hold the wire in there and what we're simply going to do back here now is quite simple uh, hopefully the camera can pick this up because the lighting's not going to be perfect but what we're going to want to do is go ahead and connect the two together 
And uh, I actually got to unclip it here because I have to push it a little farther back. Uh, I went on the, on the wrong side here, guys, so just give me a second. Uh, you want to make sure you put it on the inner side, not on the outer side of the brake line. So let me go ahead and position that that way. We're going to go ahead and snap these two together here. And they will just connect. And you want to make sure you push them far enough to where you hear a click. Let me see if I can uh, make that happen here. You guys heard that little click. And then you're gonna basically take it and you're gonna wanna hook it up to our uh, little bracket that is supposed to hold it in there. Now, I can't really see that well here because the camera's in the way. And All right guys, so that's how you do front brakes on a Porsche Macan pads and rotors now if you're just doing the pads themselves just you know don't do the rotor portion of it and if you're doing all obviously follow all the steps uh, but it's uh, you know not uh, that horrible in retrospect it, there are a couple extra steps that you have to do compared to a standard brake job on other cars uh, but overall they are doable as long as you got the time tools and the knowledge to do so uh, they're not horrible at all uh, so Hopefully this video does help you guys out if you guys were curious and knowing how this brake setup works. And if you are attempting to do this, hopefully this video helps you guys out and aids you in your installation of your pads and rotors on your Porsche or any car that has this style setup. So with that said guys, please comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. And I'll catch you guys in the next repair. Until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.